Okay, so in this problem, we're going to look at uh, working on a confidence interval for a difference in two means. And we're going to focus just on the building of the confidence interval. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, conducted a survey to estimate the average price of wheat in July and in September of the same year. Independent random samples of wheat producers were selected for each of the two months. Summary statistics on the reported price of wheat from the selected producers in dollars per bushel are shown. Okay, so we see our data here. And we're told to show that a confidence interval is given by what we see over here, right? And so our confidence interval, right? In working with our confidence interval, we want to make sure, right? We want to make sure in working with our confidence interval, right? So we've got this confidence interval that it's gonna be from negative 0.756 to the negative 0.561. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually negative 0.759 because we're gonna go through and show how to do this by hand, okay? Well, what do we know our confidence interval for a difference in means is? We know that our confidence interval is gonna be X bar one minus X bar two plus or minus my critical value times the square root of S sub one squared over N one plus S sub two squared over N two, okay? So we're gonna have, right, that for each of these, July, we're going to call one and September we're going to call two all right so that means that we're going to have we're going to put all our numbers into the right places we're going to have 2.95 right minus 3.61 plus or minus right we're going to have to figure out that critical value and we're gonna come in, we're gonna say, okay, well, what is gonna be that piece, right? So 0.22 squared all over 90 plus 0.19 squared all over 45. Now up here, we're gonna use our conservative estimate. And we're gonna say our degrees of freedom are gonna be 40, right? Because we're gonna, say that we're going to be getting this from our table. All right, so let's kind of remind ourselves about what that information looks like. All right, so we'll come over and we can say, okay, well, let's see how I'm doing this from my table of values. Table A is a Z. I don't want Z. Right. I'm going to want a T, right? So I'm going to come over and I'm going to look on my T interval, right? And it's an interval and it's 99% confidence. So I'm going to come to the column of 99% confidence, right? And I have my 99% confidence column and I see that I'm going to need to use 2.704 at 40 degrees of freedom or 2.678 at 50 degrees of freedom. I don't have 50 degrees of freedom, so I have to use 40, 2.704. So I write that information down, right? So degrees of freedom, right, from the table, which means that my critical value was 2.704. So I'm going to come in here and say 2.704, right? And now that's what I should have. Right, and I just need to come through and calculate my details here, right? So I'll come over, let me move this to the side so that we can see a little bit more of the numbers that we're gonna put in, right? So I'll start off, right, turn on my calculator. All right, let's um, refocus this just a touch. And we're going to say, okay, well, it's 2.95 minus 3.61. We're going to need that value. All right. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Looks a little bit better. So I'm going to have 2.95 minus 3.61. So I'm going to need that value. 
negative 0 0.66. I'm also going to need, right, uh, 2.704 times the square root of, and I'll have a fraction, 0 0.22 squared over 90, right, and then plus another fraction, and that's going to be 0.19 squared all over 45, and I'm going to need this value, and so that's about 0 0.099, we'll say. Okay, so I have negative 0 0.66 plus or minus 0 0.099. So this is negative 0 0.66 plus or minus 0 0.099. And if I go ahead and look at what that computation would give me, let's go ahead and pull our document camera back up to be able to see. All right, and so we might come over, oh, let's clear those drawings, All right? Might come over and just check that out. We'll say, well, what is negative 0 0.66 plus 0 0.099? And what is negative 0 0.66 minus 0 0.099? And so there I see that negative 0.759 is my leftmost value of the interval and negative 0.561 is my rightmost value of the interval. And that's what I was asked to show, right? So I have negative 0 0.075, or not 0 0.07, negative 0 0.7. I always want to be careful there. So negative 0 0.759, right, all the way to negative 0 0.561. So anytime you're asked to show, anytime you're asked to show, you're gonna make sure that you go and use your values and put them into the formula, okay? Now, on the actual AP exam, you're not gonna to need to do all of this by hand. Write down the formula, write down the clearly indicate, right? I would suggest writing down, but at least clearly indicate what each of your variables represents, and then you'll be able to come in and use your calculator and say, okay, well, I'm gonna have stat, I'm gonna have a test, I'm looking at a two sample T interval, so I select that test. I don't have my data input, but I do have the statistics, and I'll be able to come in here and say, okay, well, X bar one, that was 295. Standard deviation one, that was 0.22. Sample size one, that was 90, right? X bar two, that was 361. Standard deviation two, that was 0 0.19. Sample size two, that was 45. Confidence level, 0 0.99. Never pull, because we are not assuming that our standard deviations for our populations are the same. And then we'll calculate. Right. And so we see the calculation is negative 0 0.7561 to negative 0 0.5639, so very close, but a slightly larger interval. And that's because we have degrees of freedom of 100.45, right? And that degrees of freedom comes from a calculation uh, that your uh, calculator is doing, that you need to be familiar that the formula exists, but you don't need to use that formula, right? But it is going to be important that you clearly indicate, that you clearly, clearly indicate the degrees of freedom that you're using in your problem, because that's going to dictate your interval, right? So for this one, we went from a table, degrees of freedom, that was our T star, right? If we were doing it from our calculator, we would indicate the calculator and we'd have that slightly different confidence interval. Okay. So make sure that you ask those questions for clarification when something's not clear. And good luck.